Okay, so in this video we're going to look at a special differential equation for modeling population growth and it's called the logistic equation. And what we're going to do in this video is to derive a analytical solution to the logistic equation. So uh, before we continue, let's have a look at our previous or earlier models for population growth. Because we've looked at the model where the rate of change of population, let's say that's dp onto t, where p is the population, t is for time. So the growth rate of the population over time is proportional to the population itself. So it's some uh, factor, some growth factor r times the population itself. And in our previous videos, we've discovered that the general solution to this differential equation is given by p as a function of time is equal to a, a constant a, which is the initial population, by e to the power of r t. So what this model gives us is exponential growth, and I'll illustrate that with a graph. So we have the population on the y-axis and time on the x-axis or the horizontal axis. So we start with an initial population A and over time we see the growth curve that looks like this. So as you can see the growth rate increases faster and faster over time and you can see the exponential nature of this model for population growth. However, we know that this isn't really a realistic model for population growth because in nature nothing grows like this. Uh, if this model were to be replicated in nature, we would have very large populations of a certain species in a very, very short time, which means all the other species would be probably eliminated. So that's not a very good outcome. And there are certain assumptions and conditions that are not natural where this simple model can work. Uh, let's list some now. So this model can only work if a given species has unlimited resources. And it will include space in this assumption as well, unlimited resources in space. So for example, a bacteria growing in a petri dish. So here's my little petri dish. I'm sorry, it's not a very good one. It's a very wobbly one. Okay, and we're going to leave a trace of bacteria on the surface via a swab. So the dish is filled with a plentiful food source for the bacteria. So we can say that effectively is unlimited resources. But over time, initially we may have this sort of growth, but eventually the growth has to taper off because uh, the bacteria is going to run out of space inside of this petri dish. So you'll see it'll start to cover the space quite quickly, but it won't be able to grow much faster once it starts to run out of space. Another assumption is that there are no predators. So there are no other species that are going to use the species that we're studying as a food source. So there'll be no population decrease from being eaten or attacked. They have adequate nutrition. Okay, so there's plenty of food to feed themselves. So it ties back into the unlimited resources and immunity from diseases. Okay, so just like the predators, there are no diseases that will cause a population to die. So these are the ideal conditions for exponential growth. But as I said, uh, these conditions don't really exist in nature. So a more realistic and sustainable model for population growth which I'll draw in the graph here, would look more like this. So we start with the initial population, and in the beginning, we sort of follow the same curve as exponential growth. But eventually, what we're going to do is to taper off, the growth will taper off and level off an asymptote towards what we call a carrying capacity. Okay, so the carrying capacity is denoted by this cyan line this dotted cyan line. So if we use our bacteria example again, we start off with a little bit of bacteria. It does 
grow very quickly in the beginning, but once the bacteria start to run out of space, their growth rate will taper off towards the carrying capacity, which in this example would be related to the size of the dish. Okay, so the graph actually will asymptote towards and get closer and closer and closer to this carrying capacity, which we also call an equilibrium solution. Okay, I think that's neat enough. Okay, so in a more sophisticated model for population growth modeling, represented by this magenta curve, this is what we call the logistic model. And at the beginning, when t equals zero, time equals zero, the growth rate, dp to t, is approximately equal to the exponential growth model, or the natural growth model. So we call this natural growth. But as time goes towards infinity, as time gets larger and larger, so let's say as time approaches infinity, the rate of population growth, dp dt, approaches zero. So let me just write that in. Population growth approaches zero as time approaches infinity. Let's call this equation one, because for equation two, the equation that can model this magenta curve is given by dp on dt equals rp. So in this sense, it's still similar to natural growth, but we're going to add another factor into here, which is given by 1 minus the population on the carrying capacity k. So let me label this here as the carrying capacity k. And this is what we call the logistic differential equation, which was formulated by a Belgian mathematician by the name of Pierre-Francois Verhulst. So I'm sorry if I have butchered his name, but I think his last name is spelt V-E-R-H-U-L-S-T. Okay, so you can see by adding this function in the brackets to the natural growth model, we can see that in the initial stages where p is small and k is large, the term in the brackets approximately equals 1. So it is approximately equal to the natural growth model. But when the population gets large enough that p on k, so when p is almost equal to k, p on k is equal to 1. So we have 1 minus 1, giving dp to t equals 0. So uh, it's quite clever how this equation works, and it is a separable differential equation. So we're going to now proceed to finding the analytical solution by separating the variables and through integration. All right, so we have dp on dt equals r times p outside of 1 minus p on k and this is the logistic differential equation. Let's first get a common denominator for the term in the brackets. So we have here then k minus p all over k, and we times that by the term in front. So now we can start to separate the variables. Okay, so as usual, we get all the terms with p on the one side. So on the right-hand side, we have k on p outside of k minus p dp equals, so that's done by shifting these terms downstairs, taking the k upstairs, and we're now also going to take this dt upstairs to the right hand side, so we have r dt. Before we integrate, let's take this term here, this k on p by k minus p, and express this as two partial fractions, as the addition of two partial fractions. So k over p outside of k minus p can be written as 1 minus p plus 1, sorry, 1 over p plus 1 over k 
minus p. And if you're wondering how we got to this, I'll leave a link to how to find partial fractions in the top left hand corner of the screen. So check out that video. So now we can integrate. So integrating the left hand side, uh, if we substitute the dp back in, and by the same token we substitute the dp back in here, and we can integrate both sides. So the integral of k on p outside of k minus p is equal to the integral of 1 over p plus 1 over k minus p with respect to p, and that's equal to the integral of r dt. Just rub this out. So let's just consider the integral on the left hand side. In fact, we can separate this into two integrals. So we have dp on p plus the integral of dp on k minus p. So the result of the first integral is simply log of p plus the second integral, the result of which is log of k minus p. Now remember, we divide also by the differentiation of the term inside here, which is negative 1. So in effect, this positive becomes a negative, and that's equal to rt plus the integration constant c. Okay, so using our log laws, we can combine the logarithm on the left hand side. So it's log of p divided by k minus p equals rt plus c. Okay, let's change colors again. What I'll do now is let's uh, apply a negative to this log. And if I apply a negative to the left hand side, I have to apply a negative to the right hand side as well. So the entire right hand side becomes negated. So it's negative rt minus c. And I can take this negative into the logarithm, which means the term inside gets flipped. Okay, so if you didn't get that, the negative, we can put the powers to the power of negative 1, and anything to the power of 1 is its reciprocal, which is instead of p on k minus p, the, recipro the reciprocal of that is k minus p on p. Now I can exponentiate both sides. So I'll just take a shortcut. So if I exponentiate both sides, the left hand side becomes k minus p on p. The right hand side becomes e to the negative rt minus c, which I can express as e to the minus rt by e to the minus c. And knowing that this is a constant, let's call it a, let's make this a equals e to the minus c. We'll put the constant a in the front. All right, so the left hand side further simplifies to k on p minus 1, because p on p is equal to 1, and that's equal to a by e to the negative rt. The negative 1 on the left becomes a positive 1 on the right. And now what I'm going to do is to take the reciprocal of the left hand side. So turn, flip k on p into p on k. And if I do that to the left, I have to do that to the right. So we have 1 divided by 1 plus a by e to the negative rt. Finally, let's move this k on the bottom upstairs. So finally we have p as a function of t is equal to k, which is the carrying capacity, over 1 plus the constant a by e to the negative rt. So what we have here is the general solution to the logistic differential equation. Okay, let's leave it here for this video. It was probably quite intense enough, so review it if you need to. In the next video, we'll go through some examples of how to use this solution to model population growth. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos that will help you with your studies. Share this with your friends on social media and make this channel famous. 
Feel free to ask me any question in the comment section below this video. For now, best of luck with your math studies and I'll see you on the next video.